It's always important to pay attention to the units. That's true not just when we're doing division, but whenever we're doing math of any kind, the units typically matter. So if we're dividing a number that has units, and you might remember that's what we call a denominant number. If we're dividing a number that has units by another number, the units remain. So if you have 600 feet divided by 12, so say you have 600 feet of rope, and you cut it into 12 pieces. The result here, 600 divided by 12 is 50, and the units stay. If we have feet there, we end up with feet there. So a 600 foot long piece of rope cut into 12 equal pieces, each one would be 50 feet long. We've divided it by 12, that is divided it into 12 pieces. And each piece has a length, you see the unit there is the same unit as the original. If it was 600 inches divided by 12, we would have 600 inches. Or 600 meters divided by 12, we would have 600 meters. If both the numbers that we're working with have units, if both of the numbers have units, then the units stay on the answer accordingly. Watch this. In this example, a car drives 100 miles in two hours. We can find the average speed by dividing the distance by the time. This 100 miles is our distance, so let's say 100 miles, and we're going to divide that by the time. The two hours is the time. So I have MI, that's my abbreviation for miles, and H is my abbreviation for hours. So 100 miles divided by two hours. Well, 100 divided by two, you can probably see is 50, and I still have these units, the miles in the numerator and the hours in the denominator. So I write it like this. And you would read this as 50 miles per hour. And that concept probably makes sense to you because you've all driven and you're all familiar with driving at a certain speed. And speeds in cars are typically measured in miles per hour or if you're in Europe, kilometers per hour. The point here is that the numbers we were dividing had units and those units end up sticking around on the answer. When we're reading a problem that's a division problem or we're just trying to interpret some real world situation, there are certain words that indicate to us that division is going to be involved or is likely to be involved in the solution. Some of the words are obvious mathematical terms like the word divide or divided evenly. When you see these phrases or hear these phrases, these obviously clue you in that division is a key part of the, uh, finding the answer. Some other words or phrases that might come up are the, the phrase split evenly, where split here is just a synonym for divide. If we split something up evenly, that just means we divide it evenly. Or you might say, or you might hear the phrase how much and each, like how much did each person get, or related to that, how many for each, how many did each person get, or how many were put in each place, something like that. Those types of phrases typically indicate division. So here's an example. 28 tons of rice is divided among four trucks. How much goes into each truck. And you see the words there that indicate division. 28 tons, well we start with 28 tons, and that's a lot of rice. And we divide that by 4, and we get 7, and there's a unit there, this is measured in tons, so the unit stays on our answer. The answer is 7 tons. And you should also realize that a division problem, your answer to a division problem, can be checked by multiplying. In this case, 63 divided by 7, that equals 9, and we can check it like this. The 9 multiplied by the 7 should give us our original 63. And when we do that 9 times 7, you should know that 9 times 7 is 63. But that's our check. This works. From time to time when we do division problems, obviously a little more complicated than this one, sometimes we'll check our answers by doing a multiplication.